Hey there, welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green. Happy 4th of July to my fellow Americans. I'm going to update you on my orchid collection in the green in the green tent, <laughs> the, go, the grow tent today. We've got Vanda Falcata in bloom. Just got a couple more flowers to open up. And uh, Thank you. At least uh, I divided this plant into six divisions, and at least two people have sent me photos photos of their division in bloom this past week. Really appreciate seeing those. I'm glad those are doing well for you guys. Um, I got two new plants last week. So if you'll remember, in my catacetum collection, I had the see. So notice Wanda Light. That guy's still. You know, growing from an old back bulb there. And then I had the Fred Clark Art Desert Davison. That plant's been sold, it's gone. Uh, I got a Cloesia Rebecca, Rebecca Northern or Northen from Sunset Valley Orchids last week. And I learned that Rebecca Northen was the author of. Home Orchid, Home Orchid Growing. It was first published in the 1950s. And uh, a lot of people make the mistake of saying Rebecca Northern. But it's actually Northern. Northern. And then I also got a Cygnotis. Or Cygnotis Cooperi. Really excited about little Coop here. And... Uh, they came packed in sphagnum, planted in sphagnum, and the sphagnum's kind of slimy on top there. So, I'm not sure if there's something I can do about that. Maybe let it dry out a little bit more. But I don't want, I don't want slimy sphagnum on my signoches. Really excited about those. So now I have two. Um, this is a mormodia, which is a half mormodis, half cloesia. This is full cloesia. But both of these have the same pod parent. These are both uh, pod parent uh, Grace Dunn, Colesia Grace Dunn. So you can kind of see they kind of look similar the way that they grow there. One's just a lot bigger. So excited about those. And my big Paphio Petalum, my Path Prime Child, I've also sold that guy. It's gone. So I got a little bit more space, but then of course I have immediately filled up the space with other plants and the bulbo films that were at the bottom. Um, most of those have been sold off now and uh, there's just a couple left that people need to pick up. And then I brought all my bulbo films back up here to the top. Got them potted in bark and moss. And they're back. They're back with their friends up here in the on the top levels. Um, I thought that I cut off two of uh, Hal's spikes. They were dried up and done. But this last one, it looks like you can see it's kind of split here. It looks like he's going to try one more time. He's going to bloom one more time off this spike. So that's great. Calia Rex. This is Inti. Inti's been in bloom for about a week now. I pollinated Inti with pollen from Mayu. Mayu received an award a few weeks ago, and uh, I've had people tell me that Inti's flowers are potentially awardable as well, so why not? I, I won't be able to get Inti judged this year. Their fl the sh her flowers don't really fall on the judging dates, but why not get a get a leg up? These are large big full pretty flowers and if I use awarded pollen and if this plant ever gets awarded maybe I'll have a awarded seedlings already on the on the way uh, let's see one the other Calias they definitely have sheaths coming with buds inside them there are several I think there's eight with buds in them right now maybe six but there's a lot so there's a lot of buds coming for the Calia Rexes 
Um, earlier this week, I had a photo of NT that actually made it onto the Amer uh, American Orchid Society Instagram page. That was cool. So if you're joining me from that post, welcome. Thanks for joining. And my Calia Maxima back here. It's got two nice sheaths on it, and this one has got buds in it down here. So that's great. That should be blooming in the next month or so. All right. So I found something last week I was not happy about at all. I was inspecting these seedlings. These are Calia Dawiana Aurea seedlings. And I noticed there was discoloration, kind of a silvery aspect to some of the lower leaves. Some of them were kind of turning brown and shriveling up. And I was like, what's going on? And I, I started looking closely. And I could see these teeny tiny little orange, long, like kind of skinny looking bugs crawling around. And I thought, what on earth are those? And I looked and I looked. And then I found some little black ones as well. And I realized that they were thrips. So I have found thrips in my collection. I am not excited about it. Everything that I read about thrips says that they are the hardest one of the hardest pests to get rid of, and I can understand why. They're tiny, they're hard to see. They get down into the medium, they get in the plant themselves, they lay egg, they lay eggs inside of the plant. So, great, right? So I've found them on th several plants already. So, which, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you, you, when you finally notice it, it's already everywhere. I found several on these plants and they really are tiny. I mean you you really just don't see them unless you've got I mean I have to get my reading glasses out and really get up close. But they're there. But I saw this little black skinny thing walking around on actually the first one I found was on my Vanda Falcata over there because the flowers are white and I saw this little black thing walking around on it. I was like are you kidding me? And then I found some on Inti's flowers yesterday, some little ones. And I found some on the root tips, actually, of this Calia. You can see they're kind of wrinkly looking. You can see those little brown places on the side there. So the thrips were actually kind of in there, and just they just suck the juices. And the places where they suck the juices out, they just kind of shrivel up. So, I gave everything a spray with what I had left of a Cyflutherin solution. You can get that at your local big box stores, here in the United States at least. Um, so, I, I think I'm going to have to do some repeat insecticide treatments. I thought about maybe, get, I tried neem oil for a few days. They kept popping back after the neem oil, that didn't work too well. So, I tried some chemicals. I don't, I haven't seen any on the places where I sprayed the chemicals, so maybe that's working a little bit better. Um, but I'm gonna rotate a couple different chemicals, hopefully, over the next few weeks, and if we're really lucky, we won't see any more. But, well, I don't know, we'll see. They're not supposed to be very easy to get rid of, so we just kinda keep, gotta keep an eye out for them. As usual, you always have to keep an eye out on your plants. You never know what's going to happen. So yeah. Got sheaths on this Rex. This one's about to pop right here. It's cool because the sheaths actually fill up with air like a balloon as the buds are pushing out. This one back here is going to be popping soon. Excited about those. Uh, let's see, the kind of medium sized seedlings that I have are putting out their newest growths, and that's nice to see. Here's a Cardiana 
putting out a brand new leaf. Yeah, they're all they're all putting on new leaves, which is great. So there's abundance of soft tissue for little insects to get in and start sucking on. So we're gonna try to deal with it. Calyrex seedlings. Haven't seen any thrips this far over so far, but they could easily be in here. I see wrinkled roots. Now I know what might possibly be the cause. Kelly Walkeriana is doing all right. Look at that brand new beautiful leaf. So pristine. And this plant, Kelly uh, Jose Marti, put out three bulbs this early summer. And now it's got three more coming. This thing is a monster. This is still a seedling. It's never bloomed. You can see those new growths coming out. The most recent growth has a sheath, so maybe that'll bloom. We'll see. So that's it. That is the collection update for today. Oh, wait, one more thing. Um, Mayu, this Calia Rex, this held a seed pod for a year. I just collected it back in May. This plant, Urku, was the pollen donor. And uh, I sent that pod in to the lab a few weeks ago and I got noticed back just yesterday that the seed is viable, that it has embry embryos. They said about 15% of the seed is, is viable, which is, you know, when you consider there's, I don't know, one million seeds in the pod, 15% of that. 150 million seeds, or 150,000 se uh, possible viable seeds, still probably going to get a lot of seedlings out of that. So that's exciting. That's in the lab. That's cooking. That's it. You guys enjoy your week. Happy growing, and we'll see you next time right here on My Green Pets. I'm William Green. See ya.